Now, my salt to take, uh, after I just got done talking about how cool Wes Craven used to be, um, my salt to take is about uh, a town that's being haunted by the ghost of a serial killer. That sounds a little familiar. Um, <laughs> and seven years, or 16 years later after the death, and there's seven kids who happen to share the birth date of the death date of this really generic killer. Um, and there's all this creepy stuff happening, and there's kind of a murder mystery. Who is it? Is it the ghost? What's going on? Um, and there's, like, this loser kid who nobody likes, and even though he's perfectly attractive and normal, and I don't see what, what, why anyone would have a problem with him in real life. Um, and there's all this stupid crap with uh, teenage politics, mean girl style that's going on that doesn't fit with the plot at all. And I, I really have nothing to say about this movie. This was one of the most forgettable, terrible movies I've seen all year. I give it an F. Dear sir. Dear sir. <laughs> so, this movie was definitely B-worthy, in my opinion. B-worthy. B-worthy. Oh my God. Okay. Well, it's a B-movie. But but first of all, we have, <laughs> yes, a generic plot. But I think Wes Craven has gotten to the old, he's old enough now that he's realized he needs to pull the Bill Murray. This was Wes Craven's attempt at indie film. Was it? How can you not see it? First of all, it's delightfully absurd. Almost none of the dialogue makes any sense. Yeah. There are huge plot points that they just assume the audience is smart enough to get, which they don't. No. <laughs> I mean, there's like three hours in is when you get this massive pop plot points. I mean, yeah. But it just takes these giant leaps in metaphor through the whole thing that <laughs> feel very indie, not to mention the credits. Best part of the movie. Oh, the end the credits? The end credits, where there's the a dancing stuff? animated condor to indie music, uh, <laughs> to college rock. It was a delightful absurdity, is what <laughs> I would say this movie was. I mean, we have the, you know, the seven kids there. One's slowly getting crazier as they're getting picked off, which he starts having these great... I really enjoyed when he is sitting on a rock and just talking to himself in different voices. Yeah, kind of pulling a golem sort of but thing. I think the very beginning is where it, yeah, it just starts off really interesting. I mean, that's what it grabbed me, and I was like, whoa, this is awesome. I mean, this guy <laughs> is just crazy, and he starts killing things, and it just... And then you get to the teenage politics, which are... Crazy. I mean, they're not like teenage, they're not mean girls. They're like, you know, dictator. They're like Hitler mean girls. <laughs> I mean, even the principal is scared of these mean girls. They have, they, they, they call up the school bully and dole out punishments on levels. She's like, yeah. give this guy a three and this guy an eight. And then the guy gets, a, then the guy gets afraid <laughs> when he deals an unregistered 10. I mean, come on. What? Do you know what the hell they're talking <laughs> no. about through that whole part, though? That's the best part. It's just... There's all of this subtext. There's this whole other story going on that we don't even get to know about. <laughs> it's like there was this whole... It's a, like a part two to a movie we never saw. <laughs> There's absolutely nothing in this movie makes sense. That's what made it so wonderful. <laughs> I mean, it's just... You know, it's, it's Wes Craven trying to be artsy with a bunch of gore in the middle. I don't think this was artsy. <laughs> this, I, th I think this was just, I, th I don't even know if he was ever on the set. I think <laughs> he crapped out this script, which is just basically a less interesting version of Nightmare on Elm Street with a less interesting version of Scream, <laughs> jumbles them together, throws it out there. It's one of the most bumbling, horribly written screenplays I've ever seen on Scream. You, you don't even... They they don't even give you any of the necessary exposition until the third act, and then by then you don't even care anyway. How did the blind boy get into the 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 Cl like, third, climb the, the, climb the side of the house and hide in the closet with a blind character that I didn't well, care about yeah, throughout no, the, the whole point thing? Is you don't even know the kid's blind until halfway through the movie. He's in like four other <laughs> scenes, and finally you're sitting there like, why is he talking to him but not looking at him? And all of a sudden you go. He's blind! <laughs> I mean, that's the whole point. This movie does like eight versions of that, where it's just, you're like, why is that happening? And then else you go, why didn't they tell us this? <laughs> I found that very refreshing. Like, they, they just assumed that the audience... this poorly ham fisted story was <laughs> accidentally had these reveals? I guess so. I, I, I must have, I, I went into this with a very different mindset, I guess. <laughs> I guess I, so. I was like, I was expecting a horror movie and just got 
a bunch of absurd randomness that kind of made a plot, <laughs> which was very fun. I don't know. And yeah. I don't know. Uh, this was like torture to me. I, I literally, it was taking all of my will to sit through the rest of it. The best part is it is it's only available in 3D, and there's no 3D in it. Yeah, it's the, like, the most <laughs> useless 3D I've ever seen. Like, they have all these great opportunities to uh, vomit with a condor and stuff, and no. No 3D. No 3D vomit. It's like this really? vague illusion of depth. It's one of the laziest 3D conversions I've ever seen. I was taking off my glasses to yeah. see what the difference was, <laughs> and other than slightly blue, there was no difference, really. It was no, yeah, no. I did cheap, felt a little cheated out of my uh, three dollars there. Yeah, but no, I came out of this movie really enjoying it. I think I think at this point, Wes Craven really needs to get his stuff together and think <laughs> about his next move if he even plans on making another movie. Uh, Red Eye. Red Eye was an interesting choice. Red Eye was something, well, I would say, kind of the indie Wes Craven, where he's he, he kind of taking a, a Talking Heads movie. Uh, on an airplane and kind of doing something more on a grounded sort of thriller. That's what he should be doing at this point in his career. Not trying to resurrect the <laughs> the remembrance of his classics with teen... What do you know about teenagers, Wes Craven? <laughs> Especially at no, this point. No teenager acts like this. No teenager talks like this. Those kind of teenage politics don't even exist anymore. The whole like jocks and cool girls and all that stuff. It's a different world, and I don't know. I just, as it, or it might be the worst movie of the year for me. Oh, wow. All right. And I'm, I'm thinking the only reason you liked it is because it was so terrible <laughs> that it was somewhat entertaining. I don't know. All <laughs> right. So that's our show today. Uh, we're, don't forget to check us out on youtube.com backslash video clerks. You can check out old reviews and comment, rate, and subscribe.